everyone, I'm David from Back to Mobile Games. I am one of the publishers of a game called Ninja Squad. And Ninja Squad, which you may have played, has a cooperative sort of family version in the first part of the game, and then a player versus player version on the other side. Also in the game there's a timed version, which is quite challenging, but if you like that sort of thing, many people will play it. However, the basic rules are like this. To add to it, we recently did a supplementary copy of rules for the Dawn of Skate rules, which is a fully cooperative uh, game whereby not only you fight back against the game, the game fights back against you, but an additional player can decide to play as the guards against the characters. So two people could possibly play as ninja and try to escape, and one person could play the guards and attack them back on their turns. So it's a little supplement to the rules, which is available on Board Game Geek. It's also available on our Ninja Squad webpage on our website. In the rules, each of the ninjas has an individual um, ability. So in this example of the game, the little uh, Kanoshi, which is the little blue ninja, she can run across the water like Crouching Dragon, Hidden Tiger, or Hidden Tiger, Crouching Dragon, whichever way it is. She can do that, not like the normal game where you need a blowpipe. And the other little guy, the Yari, the bowman, he now has a range of two, three, and four to shoot arrows and spears. In addition to that, in this supplement of the rules, if I hold up to this camera here, the bookie cards, which are the purple weapons cards used in the Dawn Escape, the ninja get to do these things with them, and the guards get to do these things. So one card has two different meanings depending if you're playing it as a ninja or if you're playing it as a guard. Setting up the game, each player will get a Senjutsu card, a green card. So this ninja has got a move a ninja in any direction card. And the other ninja has got a shuriken, so they can throw it range two or three in line of sight. They also have their shuriken that they got in the normal game, which they have as a one use only card. The game begins as normal with a bit of wing star for the first player. They draw two cards, oh, I'm going to the wrong card. They draw two movement cards, put them on the table with the arrow pointing the direction of travel, and they decide what way they're going to go. So in this case, it's going to be the blue ninja going first. So they have a choice of forward, or sorry, diagonal forward one or diagonal forward one. So they obviously want to avoid the guards if possible. So in this option, this would be very good for the blue ninja to go forward, or sorry, diagonal one and then forward one, and get a red token of treasure which immediately they claim a bookie card for. In this case, they grab a tauntlet. So their turn ends, this card stays, this goes as discards like we did before, and it's the next player's turn. They draw two cards, point them in the direction of travel, and the orange player in this case has got sideways one, diagonal one, or diagonal one and sideways one. So they must start on the triangles. So in this case, they're probably going to go Hmm, like there's a treasure there. Treasures are always worth doing. They're probably going to go, oh dear, not so good. Forward one, sorry, sideways one, and diagonal one, which brings them closer to this little treasure. At that point then, the guards get to have their turn. And the guards will always draw three bookie cards. They draw a throwing star. They draw, oh, they drew a water pipe, or a blow pipe, and they drew nunchaka. The range of the cards, as we know, is on the cards. So this is range two and three. The water pipe on the little supplement says, move any guard one tile closer to a water area. A guard may enter the water to attack a ninja. So closer to a water area. So this guard here is an, a moving guard. So they could possibly move closer, but at this stage, they're gonna to return to their movement track on the next turn, which is probably not very effective. So you, they must maximize their movement. So in this case, this guard here is probably going to move forward one to be closer to the blue ninja. So that means there's a range now of one, two, three. They also have the throwing star, so they're going to throw it. And the lantern cubes we used in the night version of the game, it's going to wound this ninja. So straight away, they've taken one wound. If they take six wounds, we lose. So all of a sudden, they've moved and they've injured one of our ninja. This blowpipe was effective, this was effective. Now we've got the tauntlet. 
The Tantra is a range of one. Oh dear. They're always going to attack the most ninja they can hurt the most. So this ninja has taken one wound. This ninja has taken none. But they're also on a roof. So they can't really hit them. But they can hit this one, unfortunately. So this wound, or this, this ninja, is going to take a second wound from the Tantra. So all of a sudden you see how hard the game is. These cards are moved, discard card, and then it's back to the ninjas to take their turns again. So the blue ninja has a jump, and they also have move forward one and one to the side. So possibly a jump might be the best thing, but what they can do is they can throw their shuriken, or what was their weapon card? Move a ninja in any direction. So to maximize that, they probably might jump in the air, throw their shuriken at this guard to take it out for free, land here and then move one tile in this direction to get the treasure which immediately gives them a bookie card and this will be discarded player two will do a similar thing hopefully jump forward over the guard into the water isn't a good choice because when you move into the water your movement ends and you can only move one water tile at a time unless you have the blowpipe or the or sorry the reed so in this instance, it might make more sense to go sideways and forward to here and kill the guard. Mm, not so clever, but we have this. Uh, so <laughs> the two options are move into this guard because we can't, we can't do line of sight, of course. So we show, throw the shuriken, kill this guard, and move to where he was. And that's that player's turnover, but they've now wasted their shuriken. Back to the guard's turn. And we're back to three cards. Oh, this is really not good. Let me just let me just shuffle that one in there because these cards are a new deck. And we go Bird Whistle, Tonfa, and Numchaka. The Bird Whistle allows a guard to be called two tiles closer to any ninja. The Tonfa is obviously hit them, and the Numchaka is something similar. Had the ninja draw on the Tonfa, they could have swapped positions with another ninja, but it's not really effective at this point. So to use this properly, the first thing they can do is move and then hit and then hit. So in this instance, they can only move two, but they can't move through the water for two. So the only guard that can hit anybody is this one. So they're going to move one, and they're going to use their Tonfa to hit one, and their Numchaka to hit again. So they're going to do two points of damage. In this instance to the orange ninja and those cards will be discarded at any stage if they don't use all these cards they're discarded and new ones are drawn on the next turn so basically players can work together the water flask is a healing potion players can swap potions like cards together they can use them to help each other they can talk about how they discuss how they take guards out they can obviously try and grab the bookie cards and get more weapons but if any of them lose six wounds before they get to the end of the blue section of the board the game ends and that's the higher level cooperative version of dawn escape from ninja squad i hope you enjoyed the video